Quantum mechanics shows us that particles like photons, electrons, and even atoms are in superposition, meaning they can exist in different states and even multiple places at the same time. They are thought to be nothing more than waves of probabilities until the moment that they are measured. This measurement collapses the probability wave of the particle such that it then becomes a distinct particle with distinct properties. One interpretation of this phenomenon is that the measurement being made requires a measurer or a conscious observer. If this is correct, then it implies that consciousness has to be an integral part of creating the world that we observe. Could this consciousness then be required for creating reality? Does this mean that there would be no reality without consciousness, implying the universe would not exist unless there was someone to observe it? The answer to this profound question is coming up right now. Experiments can show that what we think of as particles, like electrons and atoms, actually behave like waves, waves of probabilities. This is the foundation of quantum mechanics. The famous double slit experiment illustrates this. So for example, if you shoot single atoms through two slits with a detection screen on the other side, and you do this repeatedly, these single atoms do not show a pattern like individual particles would, that is two bands of particles, rather they show an interference pattern, like a wave, similar to the pattern that a wave of water would make if going through two slits. This means that the particle going through the slit is either interacting with itself or other particles that are about to be fired but haven't gone through the slits yet. Okay, so this may be a bit weird, but most people can probably accept it, that atoms behave like ocean waves instead of like balls. But what is truly bizarre and unbelievable is that when you try to find out what's going on at the slits by placing a detector there to see what's happening with the atoms, by the way, this is called the which way information, in other words, if you try to detect or observe the trajectory of these atoms, they all of a sudden stop behaving like waves and now behave like particles. And this can be recorded on the screen behind the slits. You might say, well, maybe the detectors are messing with the flow of atoms somehow. Maybe when photons bounce off the atoms and go into the detector, they disturb the atom and collapse its probability wave. But if you keep the detectors there, but turn them off so that no measurement actually gets made, the screen again shows an interference pattern. And as soon as you turn the detectors back on, the interference pattern goes away. So what's going on? Why do atoms and other particles behave this way? There are many interpretations of this phenomenon. The most widely accepted interpretation is called the Copenhagen interpretation, which was devised in 1925 by two pioneers of quantum mechanics, Niels Bohr and Werner Heisenberg, at the University of Copenhagen. Their theory proposes that the atom, when it is not measured, is not distinct. It is a wave of probabilities, meaning it can potentially be at various places at the same time with various properties. Each of these places and properties has a probability associated with it. That's why there's a probability wave pattern for these particles. However, as soon as the particle is measured, this probability wave collapses and it becomes a distinct particle with distinct properties and position. But the Copenhagen interpretation does not say anything about consciousness. It just says that the particle becomes distinct when it is measured. But what is measurement after all? Does measurement take place at the instrument that measures it? Does it take place when the instrument's measurement is recorded in its digital memory? Does it take place when a human eye sees the results? Does it take place when my brain interprets the result? Or does it happen somewhere in between? Does measurement necessarily require consciousness? This is called the measurement problem of quantum mechanics. The problem is we don't know, and this has been debated for years. Physicists do not universally agree on a resolution to this problem, so there are various interpretations. Another such interpretation is called the von Neumann-Wigner interpretation. This basically postulates that in the long chain of measurement, the collapse occurs at the moment that a consciousness, presumably human consciousness, interprets the measurement. In other words, the consciousness of the physicist is making the particle distinct, and without this consciousness, the atom would just be a wave of probabilities. But this raises all kinds of potential questions about what constitutes consciousness and how is it involved in this process? Can the consciousness of a lizard or worm also collapse a probability wave? 
there are several other competing interpretations. The most fascinating interpretation is the many worlds interpretation, and it was put forth by Hugh Everett in 1957, who was a graduate student at Princeton University at the time. He was ridiculed when he first proposed it, but ironically, this is tending to gain favor with physicists today, more than 60 years later. This theory postulates that there is never any collapse, that we may be measuring it in our reality, but there's no measurement happening in a different reality, and the wave function continues in that different branch of reality, and that there are endless branches which break off from one reality and proceed in another. This implies there are multiple worlds or multiple universes where different measurement or observations or no observations could take place. But at some branch of reality, the particle collapse never actually happens. What we observe is just one measurement in our one reality. The other realities are not accessible by us. There is some new evidence that seems to support this idea of multiple realities. A paper published just this year, 2019, by Massimiliano Proietti at Harriet Watt University in Edinburgh seems to support the idea that at least two equally provable realities could exist at a quantum level at the same time. The link to this is in the description below. But then this raises questions about what is reality? This could imply that there is not an objective reality whatsoever. And the idea of infinite branches of realities introduces a kind of complication that just doesn't sit well with a lot of people, including me. But many prominent physicists, including Sean Carroll, support this idea. So what is the correct answer? Is the many worlds interpretation correct? That the wave never collapses and that reality branches off into a near infinite number of new worlds with different outcomes? Is consciousness or intent by an observer necessary? Could it be that without an observer to set things up and interpret the results, collapse wouldn't happen? Or is the Copenhagen interpretation which says that measurement causes collapse, that an observation is necessary, but that consciousness is not necessary, the correct answer? I'm going to go out on a limb and give you what I believe is the most likely answer. First, let's summarize what we know for sure. We know that measurement that records the which way information of a particle indeed collapses a particle's uncertainty wave. There's no way to cheat on this either. It doesn't matter if we put the detector before the particle enters the slit or whether we put it after the particle enters the slit. This particle collapse is consistent forward or backward in time as well, as shown by the delayed choice quantum eraser experiment, which you can read more about through the link in the description. In other words, if we try to measure the particle after it has already entered the slit, presumably after any decision to collapse or not collapse should have been made, it doesn't matter. The particle seemingly is immune to the forward or backward trajectory of time. We cannot cheat and look to see what happened before we think a collapse is going to happen. As for the many worlds, the equations of quantum mechanics allow it to be true. But since the other worlds appear to be inaccessible to us, there's no way to prove it. So just because it could be true doesn't mean it is true. The Copenhagen interpretation is the most widely accepted and in my view likely correct. It does not require consciousness to interpret or even observe the results. I think the problem is with the word observation, which for many people seems to imply that someone has to look with their eyes and eyes have a consciousness behind them. But in quantum mechanics, this is not what the word observation means. So the unfortunate terminology of observation is what causes the confusion. In quantum mechanics, an observation simply means the interaction of two quantum states that can collapse each other's probability wave function. And this can happen in many ways. Does consciousness play a role? Probably not. And there's some new evidence that seems to show this. A paper published by Shan Yu and Danko Nikolic in 2011 showed that a conscious observer was not necessary for the collapse. Their experiments measured the which way information of a particle, but recorded it in the state of an atom. This information was not available to a conscious observer, but was preserved in the atom. In other words, it was available to the universe. So it appears that as long as the information is preserved in the universe, the wave collapses, even if the consciousness of a physicist is not there to read it or interpret it. So to sum up, maybe something is observing the universe into existence, but it does not have to be conscious. Werner Heisenberg once said, what we probe is not nature, but nature under our methods of questioning. Hey guys, did you find that interesting? 
Maybe you looked at something from a different perspective? I'd love to hear from you. Please put a comment below if you agree or disagree with anything or have something to add that I could learn from. Please subscribe now and send me your questions. If I like it, I'll make a video on it. Promise.